What's going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. As always, thanks for watching and I want to actually thank everybody who's been supporting me through my journey as far as a YouTube creator. And I made that Bob Ross style video as honestly a smart ass return from a comment that was left in one of my videos. And it got me thinking, the Bob Ross and the guy before, that's not me, right? Regardless, that person was right. I was trying too hard and putting on some sort of facade. The whole, what's up guys? That's not me. <laughs> That's not who I am. I appreciate you guys for pointing that out. And I wanna be entertaining, I wanna be educational, and I wanna inspire others to follow the career that has taken me a lot of places. I've got a really exciting one for you today. We've got questions inside the Weld app all the time. We're gonna answer this week's question right now. This week's question comes straight out of the Weld app. Orion's Belt Welder has a couple questions about getting started with TIG. They're in Votech school. They're trying to figure out the whole process, the wiggle, the walk. They're on a fillet weld. They're gonna end up transitioning to open roots and grooves. We've got some pipe on plate and we've got some open root welds so that I can teach you guys the fundamentals of that wiggle or of that walk. Now we'll start with the joint configuration because TIG welding is different depending on how things all go together. So. As far as what he, the gentleman in the app was working on was a T-joint. Now this is essentially a T-joint, kind of, but it's circle, it's pipe on plate, it's still a fillet weld, it's just gonna go around and we gonna get down on the round stuff. I really only did this because I think it's gonna help me with some arc shots and also better explain how this can translate to this when it comes to pipe welding, open roots from the wiggle to the walk, from the root to the cap. Next thing we do is we set up our machine. We'll make things real quick. This isn't a technical, a real fine tuned weld setting thing that you need with a bunch of pulses and a bunch of this's and that's. This machine can be very in depth and very, I don't even know. It's got a lot of smarts to it, but pipe welders ain't so smarts. So we're just gonna keep things simple to 150 amps. We're gonna use live lift TIG, so that means we won't use a remote for it. We'll use our 1A tungsten so the machine knows what size tungsten we're using, just helps it read voltage and amperage, all that. Start amps, up slopes, post flow, all that. It's got a pulse that we can use, and we are gonna to move to pulse a little bit later just to see those cool ripples and cool patterns that we can throw, and that's why people are wanting to TIG weld in the first place and learn how to walk the cup so they can get those cool bead patterns that everybody loves. So let's talk about what most of you all are starting with, and that's the Standard size, gas lens, maybe you had a collet body set up. Those collet bodies, I rarely use unless I'm welding aluminum. This is all carbon and stainless and all that. I'm not gonna even worry about a collet body. Now, this is your smaller gas lens compared to the jumbo. And it comes with a variety of cups. You might end up getting a pack with like this, this number four, number four cup, number five, a number six. I think this one's a number seven and it gets up to number eight. And then now you're switching into that jumbo setup. I don't know who they make these number four cups for, but they're trash. I don't know who makes them. If you make them, if you know why you use a number four cup, Gaslin style, holler at it in the comments. I don't know who they make them for, I break them. Same thing with these five cups. Ow, my foot. I missed, so that's add insults to that, but I don't really mess with much other than like, a, if I go down to a six, it's very rare. A seven, very rare. I'm, I'm gonna go right up to that jumbo eight, or I can just stay with that jumbo gasoline setup. The only reason why I'd ever switch to this is I probably wouldn't, that's just me. Your cup size is all preference, y'all. It doesn't matter whether you're running a standard, a jumbo, or just something massive. It all comes down to the application and kind of what you're just used to. It's not that the size is different when it comes to a jumbo to a standard. If it's an eight cup, it's an eight cup, that means eight sixteenths, so that's a half an inch, right? For every number is a sixteenth of an inch. So I've got a 15 cup here, that's 15 sixteenths of an inch. We almost got a full inch of coverage here. The biggest difference between a jumbo eight and our standard eight is the gasoline size on the inside is bigger, so you get a lot more gas coverage, which might be what you probably want. So I usually stick with that jumbo setup. And then as far as the, the wiggle, like you can literally take a 10 and do the same walk as an eight the only difference is that tungsten stick out. Now that stick out rule of thumb is for however wide that circle is, right? 15, 16, so that's about how far we should stick it out. And that's just the rule of thumb. That's not the rule to follow. That's not the life rule. You can do whatever works. Now we know our torch, our cups, our stick out a little bit better. Now let's talk technique, that wiggle versus that walk. Let's learn it. Now I switch back to my 
trusty tin cup. And I actually do like my tungsten stick out a little bit further than maybe even that 10 sixteenths or so. The reason for that is it just helps me see a lot better. Having that extra stick out, having that bigger cup allows me to sit further off, more stick out, better gas coverage, and I can see what I'm doing. Now the biggest difference between a wiggle and a walk is the points of contact that you have. Whereas on a wiggle, we've got two pieces of contact on either the pipe and plate or two pieces of bevel. And we're able to just kind of wiggle, 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 wiggle. Almost like if we were a dirt bike rider and we were on the throttle on the dirt bike or not four wheeler, the four wheeler uses like that, I think. But anyway, you got a throttle, whether it's a dirt bike, a motorcycle, and you're just moving that throttle, just little tiny, 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 tiny bits back and forth, back and forth, like really fast, watching that puddle lay down in front of you and keeping up with this curvature, of course, the pipe on plate. In the walk, you only have one point of contact on the piece of pipe or plate, and you have to physically now roll this. Okay, now remember the settings that we had with this Typhoon. We're gonna grip that torch and we're gonna push into the pipe. We're not gonna push the direction that we're going. We're gonna imagine a line from our torch going straight through the pipe. The bottom of this cup needs to be that pressure point and that's where I'm pushing. And if the pipe is turning, then my pressure point gets put in a different spot. Keep that in mind as we do this wiggle. We're only trying to do this little motorcycle motion. We got the juice, we got 150 amps lift arc on this Typhoon. Gas is just purring. Little tiny motions for this root pass. You don't have to go super duper fast. You just want that puddle to lay, lay out, lay flat. Moving around that pipe. You gotta keep your face in front of it, otherwise you're gonna slip and apply pressure somewhere else. And that there is your root pass. So right here we did the nice little tight wiggles, really tight wiggles, really tight wiggles. And we did that whole thing. We switched up. The only thing that we switched up here, which is really cool looking, and it's just a pattern, just kind of a, a signature, is just dipping that wire as we did the same motion up. So you could get different looks of that well. We are using some 309 stainless wire, because it's carbon to stainless, so that's what we're doing. Now we're gonna keep wiggling. We don't have, we still have that two points of contact. Until that thing fills up, to where I can only sit on one piece of that cup, this wiggle can still walk, okay? So we're still gonna just now start fanning that puddle out a little wider. It's a lot like a hot pass on a piece of pipe where you're still stuck in those bevels, uh, but you still gotta flatten and widen out that little spot and wash it all out, paint it in. I did actually turn the machine up too from 150. We're working on quarter inch thick pipe and plate and 160 was just where it, it, it was welded way better for me Anyway, we're gonna move on to a hotter pass or the hot pass. I think 180 ought to be plenty. The hot pass on this weld is no different than the root pass. You just literally just start going just a little bit wider. And wherever gravity is, keep your wire to that top side of whatever gravity is. We're gonna try to keep a nice arc shock for you. Might have to roll this a little bit. Keeping that wire towards the top toe and kind of just going like a wire's width outside of that root pass. Try not to shove any rod. I'm gonna manipulate this wheel at the same time. Can gain some speed. But really all we're focusing on is that pattern. That side to side. Ooh, my foot just flat. That was kind of tough to do before. Kind of locked down my wheel. I'll just do it like I did the root and quarters. I'm not really trying to carry a lot of metal right now, but just a little nice smooth sweeping motion. Painting with it. You need amperage to paint. That's why we're at 180. Still just doing that same motion back and forth like as if we were on a dirt bike. Opening and closing in that throttle. I keep my pinky off the torch so I don't death grip it too. That's a big deal. You never want to death grip this torch. You gotta have a light grip. And again, applying pressure towards the pipe, not the direction you're going. If you ever find yourself behind your torch, you're probably gonna slip. I'm not slipping because I know where to put the pressure on there, but stay in front of it. 
I mean, that's basically it. We're just going again up this piece of tubing or pipe. And we're just moving side to side with this little bit of wrist motion. There's not a lot of arm, shoulder, no nothing. It's just this little tiny wrist motion and keeping up with it. Now it's got a bunch of different colors and stuff from us start and starting and stopping and you guys were bird dogging me. So I'm gonna do one more wiggle pass and try to make it look real consistent and put a pretty one on there and then we'll move to this open root. not too shabby right there got a lot of different colors uh parts getting pretty hot you know from us putting these multiple passes on there and that's going to still be the difference again between using an eight cup or using like a five cup we've got weld on here now i can probably stick with the 10 cup i got and still wiggle right now if i try to switch to an eight i'm going to start bottoming out on that weld and it's going to be harder for me to move and do that same wiggle which is fine. You're going to hit that point. If the weld needs more, it's going to do like that. Same on the open root or a V groove. But we're going to go ahead and move on to that. But first, I want to point out the last thing is these little scratch marks on the pipe from actually scooting or wiggling this cup. Some places won't let you do that. And they're going to call it as a defect. And they're going to be like, you can't put that kind of scratches on this material. You're, you know, bunking it up, making it look ugly. So they're gonna want you to freehand that stuff. That's a whole nother video. Now switching to an open root V-groove, it's different than a fillet weld, but you can't overthink it because it is kind of the same. We're gonna stick our cup down right in that groove and that cup is actually gonna be a little bit different. Again, my preference is still gonna be this 10 jumbo, but there's gonna be different bevel sizes that it might be easier for someone to stay step down a cup size so that this cup sits down a little farther in that groove and allows for that kind of easier wiggle. I guess the point that I'm trying to make is that tungsten stick out, and that's no pun intended. Got a six cup here, and as you can see, it's got a smaller circle, so it's gonna fit into that groove a little bit better than say this 10 cup that's gonna sit way higher outside those bevel edges, and you might need a lot more tungsten stick out to reach that open root, but the point is, Again, doesn't matter whether you like to sit deeper in the groove or higher up on the edges, that tungsten stick out needs to be able to reach down into that open root and just be edge to edge. You've gotta be able to keep that tungsten right over top of that bevel edge. And again, the only difference is that tungsten stick out. You can run whatever you want, but that wiggle, that's what we're gonna do. Same little wiggle, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We're not trying to do a big weed yet. Your root should only be as wide as your gap. Now our fit up is gonna dictate that amperage. If I can get that rod through, or if it does not go through, then I'm gonna be running hotter, but I've got half the pipe where that 1 8 rod does go through, right here and over here, and then the other half does not. I'm gonna end up welding this tight side first in hopes that this will kind of tighten up, but that's gonna be the difference in amperage when we step over here. As far as putting in the open root, we're going to keep everything real simple with the Typhoon. We're not going to worry about that, you know, crazy pulses or anything super in depth. We're going to keep that lift start on. The only thing we're going to take down for that op with that 1 8 rod that doesn't go through, I'm going to be at like 115 or so. I need some heat. But when we get to that bigger spot, we might have to turn it down to about 100. All right, let's turn this two piece into one. Put this bead in it, old son. And just like that fillet weld, with this wire that's not gonna go through this gap, we're just gonna apply a little bit of pressure. A little bit of pressure and keeping that real tight wiggle. Real tight. Bevel edge to bevel edge, no wider. And we're gonna have that root just get soaked right in. I'm starting to get on the other side of the pipe. I'm trying not to get in the way of the camera. Trying to keep my head in front of it. I'm getting really tight. Gotta be careful with that. Mmm, don't shove, don't shove. I'm getting on this downside, I can't see poop. 
get into that tack. Close it up. Hold it. Taper out. Let it soak in. It'll give that little bit of reinforcement that you're looking for, but you don't need to shove any wire. If you shove wire, you're gonna get a hump. You're gonna get a bump. You're gonna get a piece of cold wire. Just floating it. Maybe a little bit of pressure, but flat pressure, not stabbing pressure. Lay that rod a little you know, flat with the bevel edges instead of stabbing it up and down. That'll keep you from stabbing it, getting those humps and bumps. But right now we're just doing this little wiggle. Close up that root, hold that heat, feather off. Looking at our root pass, this is with just like a the tight, tight fit up, right? So we got that little bit of root. This is an eighth inch wire. We're definitely not anywhere above an eighth of an inch. Coming up the side, we come up, it all looks the same. This is actually where we did pull back that piece of cold wire that I thought I was hitting record on. This looks super smooth, super smooth. This is super smooth where we really got control of our heat. This is where we found out we were too hot coming up that side. It started getting really heavy, starting dropping that bead. So we know we're getting big, heavy spots. We don't want that. We didn't have it down here. That wire wanted to cooperate. As soon as we got up on the side and gravity was against us, we needed to be colder. Here's that root pass from the outside. Looks pretty all right. You really can tell when you've done it right because that bead is just sucked in there. Always like to give her a jimmy before we move on to the hot pass. The hot pass is gonna be real similar. We're gonna be at least 150 guys. I don't operate a lot less than 150 on a hot pass unless it's like schedule 10. We're working on stainless steel or thinner stuff, but schedule 40, 150 is like a minimum. Gotta have some heat. This does not affect my route too much. No, no, no. We're actually, we're on the top of the pipe. We're gonna be rolling it. 160 at least. Like I gotta have, if you want it, if you want that thing to flow, you want it to move, you gotta have that amperage. It gets a little tricky when you're working on thin stainless. You gotta different, but right now, 160. Same concept as that fillet weld. We're just gonna be moving this thing side to side. Wiggling, wiggling, wiggling. Again, with two points of contact, this is the motion. It's a wiggle, side to side, left, right, left, right, left, right. That little hang up there, you might get that if you're not really being gentle with it and being light with the torch. Once we move out to this pipe, then you're gonna see that we only have one point of contact and we're really gonna have to start walking it back and forth. We're gonna be running some 309 on this hot pass. It'll look good and I also don't have any clean carbon steel. But just doing this little wrist motion. Now the problem with the tin cup that I'm using is sometimes you will get hung up. The solution is just to kind of pick up your edges, kind of step on the bevel edges instead of trying to do this little wiggle you gotta be careful on your hot pass too that you're just laying that wire you're feeding some wire but if you're jamming you can stab right through that root just a little twisty twist you try to pick up speed Try to find out what that puddle will allow you to do at 180 amps. Kind of start wanting to, have to predict that tie-in. We don't have to necessarily wait on the sides because it's hot enough. So we just need to see how fast that puddle will let us move. Oop, don't shove any wire. Kind of rotating this wheel with my forearm and stopping it with my thigh so that I can use this manual wheel to roll this weld out. Really only weld rolling this out because it's easier to film by yourself. Getting that tie in, we'll just pull that wire out and try to thin that puddle out to nothing and tail right out of it without without arch striking on it like that. There's our hot pass, 180 amps. 
got our tail out right here where we whipped out of it and then we put a nice arc mark way out here so don't do that but i like to see a good sign on a hot pass is this line there's like a sunken line right through the middle and that's how you really know you cook that in there and set that bead in nice grabbing a 1 8 stainless rod now I, again i don't have any good clean carbon but we're going to get this thing out ready to cap so that you guys can see all that walk the cup stuff so there's our fill pass we've got one more that i like to call the butter pass to get this thing nice and flush and ready for a cap you're never ready to cap with tig if you think you're ready to cap put another fill in it. you know what i mean when it comes to tig welding you can see this is a, a pretty tight weave i'm pointing down and i'm pointing to the right and then I'm pivoting off that bottom point, that one point of touching, roll, point, roll, point, at the same time. Just a little bit of roll. Now that's for like that longer walk. While I was filling, I needed to keep that walk tight. There's two different, there's, there's a thousand ways to skin a cat, as they say, and you can move it tight, you can walk it tight, you can walk it tight, you can walk it tight, keep pressure against and almost pulling back that torch as you walk or maybe you just have to push your tungsten stick out in more which will make you stand up on the cup and make you take those smaller steps so i'm walking it right now almost like that wiggle we did earlier this is a technique that you'll see a lot more of when it comes to sanitary work exhausts they'll they'll do this smaller steps where they can actually wiggle it's like a wiggle walk but they're fast with it, right? Whereas if you pull that tungsten out a little bit more, and lean that torch back, now you can take a little bit longer steps and take longer ones. But it, you can get it done either way. But all we're doing is point to the right, roll to the left. Point to the right, roll to the left. You can point left, right, you can point. But you've got to add that roll. Not a lot, a little bit. Now that we're moving on to this butter pass, I like to start getting my own signature in play. I think I take some bigger steps than most. Big steps can get you in trouble though. Some places won't let you step that big. My tungsten is smoked already. Back with the fresh tungsten. Get passed over this nasty boo-boo that I just left on the pipe. And the, the travel speed of my walk is dependent on my amperage. I can weld slower, but I must turn it down. Now, I like to weld hot, weld fast, blast the gas, move as fast as that puddle will let me. So it's like that pivot that I told you about, but it's a little bit more predictable as you get used to the motion. But this is real time, this is real speed. I would say this is a pretty pretty quick walk it's scheduled for you there's not a big bevel you're not putting a lot of weld down right left right left some people like to i like to listen to music when i'm doing it, it really helps me get in a vibe just really focus on that edge the edge control that's what you're really trying to do pause see i can slow things down I can slow things down you don't want to slow down too much because then we put more heat into the parent metal that we need. So if we're going to slow down, it's usually wise to turn your amperage down. So then you can see in my wrist, it's a little bit of wrist action, a little bit of grip. Try not to death grip it. Keep a pinky off the torch or in your palm. That way, if you start to actually grip that torch too much, you'll hurt yourself. You'll hurt that pinky that's tucked under there. And then it'll remind you that, hey, quit death gripping that torch. There's just a little bit of wrist work. And if I had to guess where a lot of my other muscle memory is coming from, uh, maybe a little combo of all that elbow and that shoulder, at least in this position where I'm at. If I get each one of those joints to do a little bit of motion, motion it ends up being a lot of motion towards the end. So I'm not over exaggerating one or the other. Really focusing on watching the edge of that puddle hit that bevel, but not pushing it back. You'll, it'll almost make that bevel straighter with the edge of my puddle, if I can control it. Try to keep our wire fairly centered. 
I think we're coming up on our start right here. Not quite there. Now we got that butter pass on there that that one termination needs to clean up. But you can start seeing those bigger ripples. You know, that's just from pulling that tungsten out and doing just a little bit more pivot. I like this method more because I just feel like I can see better. Now, before I cap anything, I always like to let the part pipe cool off all the way to the touch. Now you can do that. Probably you should just wait. You don't need to squirt it with a hose. On a pinch for time, it's cool to the touch. I can lick this thing and I'm about to slick this thing right out. Let's put a lid on it. The biggest thing to this walk the cup method, guys, is keeping your face in front of your TIG torch at all times. The pipe is round. That means the angle changes. That means you have to move and you wanna be putting pressure against the pipe even if you have to like be pulling a, a backwards even a hair it might feel like sometimes but you really need to push against the pipe not the direction you're trying to walk but just down down against it or up against it or if depending on where you're at if it's in a fixed position that's the direction that you push that torch keeping your face in front of it will keep you from slipping and pushing it that way Well, brother, I hope that helped you figure out your wiggle or your walk. Find your own signature. How do you want to step it? Now, this all kind of transfers into different applications. If you're doing sanitary, you're going to do that quick wiggle walk. If you're doing some fillet welds, pipe on plate, you might be able to wiggle it. But if they don't want the scratches, now you got to freehand it. All things, if you have questions, to go inside that weld app and ask them, man. If I don't get to them, someone else will. As always, everyone, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate you. I didn't record any of that. Ain't that about a bitch.